Welcome. And today we are going to solve some problems related to latent heat and specific heat and many more. So let's see this question here. A 50 gram sample of copper is at 25 degrees Celsius. If 1200 of energy is added to the copper by heat, what is its final temperature? So what do we have here? We have here the mass given as 50 grams. We have the temperature or let us say T1 as 25 degrees Celsius. We also have energy given as 1200 Joule. What is its final temperature? How can we do this? Well, we know that the formula of energy is equal to mc multiplied by the difference in temperature. So energy we have as 12,000 here, 1,200 is equal to the mass. Now the mass must be in kilogram. So we will divide this here by 1,000 to get it in kilogram. So when you divide this here by 1,000, we will get 0 0.05 kilograms multiplied by the specific heat of copper. Now what is the specific heat of copper? And why are we using the specific heat of copper? Because in the question they said copper. So we will use the specific heat of copper which is 387 multiplied by the difference in temperature. So now what will we do here? We will multiply these two first and then we'll divide it in the other side. So we'll have here the difference in temperature multiplied by 19.35 when you calculate this is equal to 1200 Joule. Now we will divide this both sides to get the difference in temperature finally as 62.01 degrees Celsius. Now this is the difference in temperature. Now how can we get the T final? And we know that the difference in temperature is equal to T final minus T initial. Or let us say the difference in temperature is equal to T2 which is the T final minus T1. So the difference in temperature which is 62 Point zero 0.01 is equal to T2 which we are looking for minus T1 which is 25 degrees Celsius. So now we will take this to the other side or we will add it by 25 both sides and this will cancel out here. So we will get T2 or the final temperature as 87.01 degrees Celsius. So for this question here, as a part of an exercise routine, a 50 kilogram person climbs 10 meters up a vertical rope. How many food calories are expended in a single climb up the rope and one food calorie is equal to 10 power 3 calories. So we have here a rope and we have someone here who is climbing the rope at a distance of 10 meters. So we'll take this as height. Now how many calories or how many food calories is he going to burn? So what do we know? We know that to find the energy here we will find the potential energy. Why will we find the potential energy? Because we have height and we have the mass of the person which is given in the question and we will also have gravity because the person is going up. So the potential energy will be equal to the mass multiplied by the gravity multiplied by the height. 
but in thermal physics we will not use PE instead we will use Q so we'll say Q is equal to M multiplied by G multiplied by H so the mass is given as 50 kilogram and the height is given as 10 meters and the gravity you can take any numbers you want so you can take 9.8 or you can take gravity as 10 so what do you think we shall take so let us take 10 to simplify matters as our gravity so we will have here the energy is equal to the mass of the person which is 50 in kilogram so it's in kilogram no problem multiplied by the gravity we will take as 10 multiplied by the height which is 10 also so when we calculate this we will get here 5000 joules now this is the energy now what do they want they want this in food calories so we know that one food calorie is equal to 4186 joules so 5000 joules will be equal to how many food calories we'll do cross multiplication here and we will have here the food calorie to be 5000 divided by 4186 so this will give us when we calculate this one point one nine four food calories a 75 kilogram weight watcher wishes to climb a mountain to walk off the equivalent of a large piece of chocolate cake rated at 500 food calories how high must the person climb Take in mind that one food calorie is equal to 10 power 3 calories. So what do we know? We have here a mountain and the person wants to climb the mountain there so that he can burn some calories. Now we can see here that we have height and of course we are given in the question the weight of the person which is 75 kilograms so how can you find how many food calories this person is getting so in order for him to burn 500 food calories how high must he go now what do we know we know that the energy related to this kind of diagram is potential energy because potential energy is equal to the mass multiplied by the gravity multiplied by the height but again in thermal physics we will not use potential energy we will use the Q sign or the energy which is related to the thermal or the thermodynamics so Q will be equal to mass multiplied by the gravity multiplied by the height now Q is the energy which is this one here 500 food calories but one thing to keep in mind we need to have the energy in joule so to have the energy in joule we will multiply this by 4186 so let us multiply 500 times 4186 this will give us two zero nine three zero 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 joule this will be equal to the mass of the person which is 75 multiplied by the gravity so let us take the gravity here as 10 so you can also take the gravity as 9.8 I'm just taking 10 to simplify matters multiply by the height 
So what is the height we are looking for? Now, what can we do? Let us calculate this one. Calculate 75 times 10 is 750. So we have 750H is equal to 2093000. Let us divide 750 both sides to get the height finally. So this would cancel out and we'll get the height to be 790.66 meters so for this question a 5 gram lead bullet traveling at 300 meters per second is stopped by a large tree if half the kinetic energy of the bullet is transformed into internal energy and remains with the bullet while the other half is transmitted to the tree what is the increase in the temperature of the bullet? So what are they saying? They're saying that we have a bullet, bullet here. And they shot this bullet at a tree. So what's happened? They're saying that half of the kinetic energy of the bullet has been changed into internal energy so what is the increase in temperature this is what they want now we have here the velocity given as 300 meters per second we also have here the mass which is given as 5 gram but we will change this into kilogram by dividing by a thousand which will give us 0 0.005 kilogram and what else do we have so yeah that's it now let us find the increase in temperature so half multiplied by the kinetic energy the formula of kinetic energy is half multiplied by the mass multiplied by the velocity squared this will be equal to the internal energy the formula for internal en energy is mass multiplied by the specific heat of the material multiplied by the difference in temperature so let's just substitute our values so we'll have here half multiplied by half is a quarter so we'll have here 1 over 4 multiplied by the mass of the bullet which is 0 0.004 kilogram multiplied by the velocity squared will be equal to the mass which is the same again multiplied by the specific heat of the lead because they say this is lead bullet then we have to see the specific heat of lead so what is the specific heat of a lead bullet the specific heat of the lead bullet or of the lead is 128 so we'll multiply here by 128 multiplied by the difference in temperature which we are looking for so this mass and this mass would cancel out and then to get the temperature here we will divide by 128 both sides So let us calculate this to get the increase in temperature. So we will get the increase in temperature is 175.78 degrees Celsius. So for this question here, F1.5 kilogram copper block is given an initial speed of 3 meters per second on a rough horizontal surface. 
Because of friction, the block finally comes to rest. If the block absorbs 85% of its initial kinetic energy as internal energy, calculate its increase in temperature and B, what happens to the remaining energy. So we have here a block which is made out of copper. It is then given a speed of 3.0 meters per second. Now what are they saying? They are saying that after it has come to the rest here, at after it has relaxed down, then 85% of its kinetic energy has changed to its internal energy. So what happens to the remaining energy and what is the increase in temperature? So now we'll just substitute the values and we'll get the increase in temperature. So 85 divided by 100. Now what do we know? We know that the formula of kinetic energy is half mass times velocity squared. So multiplied by half, multiplied by the mass in the question is given as 1.5 kilogram. So multiplied by 1.5 kilogram multiplied by the velocity squared. So the velocity is given as 3 meters per second at squared. This is equal to the internal energy. Now we know that the internal energy is equal to mc multiplied by a multiplied by the difference in temperature. So this would be equal to the mass again, which is 1.5 multiplied by c, or the specific heat of copper. So what is the specific heat of copper? The specific heat of copper is 387 multiplied by the difference in temperature which we are looking for now let us cancel this and this because the mass and the mass are the same now to get the difference in temperature we will divide by 387 both sides so finally we will calculate this. We have here the difference in temperature, which is this, will be equal to 85 divided by 100 multiplied by half multiplied by 3 squared divided by 387. So we just calculate this. This will give us the difference in temperature as 9.88 times 10 or negative 3. Because this is temperature, it is degrees Celsius is the unit. So for part B, this is part A. Part B, what happens to the remaining energy? Well, the remaining energy will be absorbed by the surface. So now we will deal with latent heat phases and this, these changes and the energy related to all of this. So let us see this question. A 100 gram of ice of 0 degrees Celsius is dropped into 1 kilogram of water that was originally at 80 degrees Celsius. What is the final temperature of the water after the ice melts? So let us say here we have a jar here and uh, we have water. But uh, the water is somewhat hot, having a temperature of uh, 80 degrees Celsius. And then we have another here, ice. We have ice at 0 degrees Celsius. It is being dropped inside the water. So what is the final temperature of the water? So what will happen first? First of all, the ice will melt 
second the ice will change into water or the ice will be ice water and third we have the energy of the water which will decrease later on so when melting happens or also called fusion the temperature stays the same so this will be from 0 degrees celsius to 0 degrees celsius now the energy gotten from this melting here will be the mass multiplied by the latent heat of fusion now when you take this energy and you add it by the ice water which is the energy by the ice water so the energy by the ice water will be equal to the mass multiplied by the specific heat of water multiplied by the change in temperature of the water which was ice and when you add this by the energy of the water itself which was 80 degrees celsius which is mass multiplied by the spe specific heat multiplied by the difference in temperature you must get zero why because later on these all the ice and the ice water and the water will become in thermal equilibrium so when they come in thermal equilibrium it means that these or the addition of these three must be equal to zero so the mass of the ice which is 100 gram and will change 100 gram to kilogram let's give him the question here so it will be 0 0.21 kilogram so we'll have here first of all we'll start with this so we'll have here the mass of the ice is 0 0.21 multiplied by the latent heat of fusion so what is the latent heat of fusion it is 3.33 times 10 power 5 this is a constant number added by the mass of the ice water so the mass of the ice water we will use the same mass which is of the ice 0 0.1 multiplied by the specific heat of water which is 4186 multiplied by the difference in temperature now the difference in temperature means the temperature final minus the temperature initial so the difference in temperature will be the temperature final minus the temperature initial now what was the temperature initial of the ice it is zero degrees celsius so minus zero degrees added by this here so the mass of the water is given as one kilogram multiplied by the specific heat of water which is 4186 multiplied by the difference in temperature so the difference in temperature is t final which we are looking for minus t initial what is the initial temperature of the water it is 80 degrees celsius now to get the tf we will solve this as a mathematical equation so what can we do here let us multiply this and let us multiply this and let us multiply this so we will have here here we will get 3.33 times 10 power 4 plus 0 0.1 times 4186 is 4.418.6 tf minus 0 now the 0 will be cancelled because it is neg it is just negligible so we'll just cancel the zero and we'll have here tf added by let us do this mathematics so we'll take 4186 and multiply it here we'll get 4186 tf minus 4186 multiplied by 80 which would give us three three four eight eight zero all of this is equal to zero now let us collect like terms this tf and tf when we add this we will have here 
4604.6 TF and let us take this negative 3348 and collect it to this term here so we'll take in the calculator 3434 this will give us negative 301580 all of this is equal to zero but to get to the final temperature here we will take 301580 to the other side so we'll have here 4604.6 is equal to 301580 so we'll divide by 4604.6 both sides and we'll finally get our TF as or our temperature final as when you divide this you'll get sixty-five point four nine degrees Celsius. Now how about this question here? Well this question is the same as the previous one, so I'll leave it for you to solve this. And let me know in the comment section what did you get.